What's up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here. I King Amongst Kings, CLG Speaks, Corwin L. Gilliams. Hashtag me on Facebook and Instagram. I've been mostly on Insta uh, Facebook recently, um, spirit-led. Uh, I felt for a while that the Lord was kind of like remove, not necessarily removing me, but redirecting me more intentionally as always. But to focus more on my Facebook platform as opposed to like the other social media platforms that I'm on. And so, um, so yeah, that's where, you know, if you follow me on either one of those, you'll notice that I've been more um, diligent on my Facebook platform and will continue to do so until, um, you know, something else pops up, right? So quick message, I'm gonna try to keep my messages under 15 minutes because right now it's just easier that way for my videos to upload it seems like anytime the videos are i guess more than 30 or 45 minutes it takes longer to upload on facebook and i'm uploading it maybe it's the lte um you know phone network that i'm using i don't know what it is but either way i think 15 minutes is good enough based on just our current you know ability to focus right short attention spans for those people who can't watch a video for more than 30 minutes i think 15 minutes or increments of 15 minutes um would be best right just using wisdom and so um today so i say that to say that i have a video that i've i, I recorded i pre-recorded a 45 plus minute video that i've been trying to upload but for whatever reason it will not upload and so that right there was just like you know what just to avoid all of that you know, I'm just gonna keep my minutes in uh, my videos in 15 minutes uh, increments. Uh, so this video is gonna I'm gonna talk about you know just the desires of your heart, right? Psalm 37, uh, chapter Psalms chapter 37 verses four. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart, right? So that and that scripture I've I've experienced being interpreted in two ways, right? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, right? So the first one is delight yourself in the Lord, right? Praise, give God thanks no matter your circumstances. And he will give you the desires of your heart. So whatever it is that's in your heart, he will manifest them for you because you are being grateful, right? The second interpretation is, again, the scripture is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, still... The first part of that scripture is delight yourself in the Lord, right? So give thanks, give praise, worship, acknowledge God, you know, be grateful for everything that's going on in your life, regardless of how bad it looks. And he will put desires in your heart, right? So the first one was he will manifest the desires in your heart. The second def um, interpretation is he puts the desires in your heart. So you'll find that for most people, I know for me, you know, when you're giving thanks, right? When you're worshiping God, when you're praising, when you're fasting, whatever it is that you're doing to, um, that is coming, that is uh, aligning with your responsibility and your duty as a child of God, as a servant of God, to delight yourself in the King of Kings. You'll notice that certain things start awakening or being called to your remembrance. It may be like certain desires, certain visions, ideas, certain things that you wanted to accomplish, whether it was going to school, going back to school, or creating a business, or whatever, you'll find that when you're in a state of gratitude or worship and praise, that these these ideas, these visions, these inspirations may have been gone for a while, but they start resurfacing. They start getting awakened because of your state, right? According to 30, um, Psalm 37.4. And so for me, I've noticed that, you know, I believe that, you know, the scripture talks about God putting desires in your heart, right? So there are a lot of things that we won't know and will never know as human beings based off of different reasons. I'm sorry I'm sweating here. I'm outside sunbathing. Um, yes, we need sun. Black people need sun. Um, we, you know, our skin was made for the sun. We, um, we, you know, we human beings for the most part not everyone has the luxury or the um the opportunity or just the privilege of having certain experiences right whether that was coming from you know uh 
whether that is coming from a family of wealth or just you know whatever it is that allows people to have certain experiences and worldviews that are more eclectic or more increased or more advanced than others you'll find that most people don't have that opportunity and that privilege so what happens is the spirit of god you know because of he is god and he's a god of justice and grace and mercy and favor and he truly favors the oppressed the underserved the disadvantaged the orphans the widows and those people who are who are ostracized and oppressed in society he always makes a way for these individuals to um not suffer at the at the hands of wicked or evil people right and even if you even if you do it's only for a, a limited time right so he provides opportunities for us yes me included to not have to go through just i guess you know again certain people having certain luxuries and certain privileges based off of generational wealth and just having forefathers who may have done what was quote unquote right, right? To establish legacy and generational wealth that has been passed down. A lot of us didn't come from that. So we don't have the benefits of knowing, let's say what to go to school for, or just having certain things that you gain just from experience. A lot of us are just winging it, right? And so what the favor and the grace of God does is he cuts all of that out. He's like, I, you know, I, I've, been, I've been referring to God as the ultimate equalizer, right? He's a person who, you know, he just destroys and dismantles every barrier, every systematic barrier created out of, you know, human pride and just the pride of man, right? Rooted in evil and, and fear he breaks all of that down and opens your heart going back to psalm 37 4 when he puts the desires in your heart he's putting the things in you that he created for you to do right a court from and this is from a biblical perspective right a biblical worldview predestined in christ there are things that god created you to do in christ that you will only access and, and come into full awareness when you decide to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? So, and there's no other way around it, right? And so a lot of us, we're in a place of uh, limbo and just struggling because we are just not surrendering to the will of God, you know? We wanna do what we think is best for us. We wanna subscribe to the ways of the world and just knowing that it never worked for us. And so when we delight ourselves, right? According to Psalm 37, four, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. When you're able to maintain a, uh, when you're able to maintain or sustain gratitude, right, gratefulness, awareness of God's goodness, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what you're going through, you'll find that it leaves room for God to work mightily in your life. And for the most part, we all want to be in position, you know what I'm saying, to receive God's favor, His grace, His blessings, material, spiritual, all of that good stuff right but we also have to be obedient right and surrender right to the hopes plans and the future that he has for us according to jeremiah 29 11. so with that being said you know if you're someone who is dealing with you know what i'm saying just depression um just confusion you know what i'm saying um just whatever it is where you're being double-minded and questioning god's goodness get into a position get into a state right sometimes that has to you have to be by yourself get away from the media get away from people who are distracting you get away from the things that are taking taking the lord's place in your life and begin to meditate on his word meditate on his promises meditate on psalm 37 4 jeremiah 29 11 right and all the scriptures in the word of god that reassures you who you are in christ that reminds you of what God did for us so that we don't have to be subjected to the evils of this world, but we can live free according to the spirit of Christ who lives within us, right? And so again, all the distractions in the world, whether it's TV, social media, our media, um, it can be sickness, disease, whatever it is, the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy the plans of God for your life. You have to take control and use the self-discipline given to you by the Holy Spirit to be reminded of who is in charge of your life, right? be reminded of that and not allow the opinions of people and the, the the small mindedness of people and the people who are still blinded by the god of this age the enemy who are just puppets right just being used as vessels to manifest 
evils on this earth, you know, you have to come into agreement with who God says you are in his word. And that requires your free will. It requires your obedience. It requires uh, discipline, right? To know, okay, well, um, you know, even though my life is not the way that I want it to be, even though it seems like things are going wrong, what did God promise me, right? Let God be true and every man a liar. What did the spirit of God show me over and over and over and over and over and over and over again in my life that I didn't have to worry even when I was worrying, right? That I didn't have to be fearful even when I was fearful. He always showed up. He always took care of me. And so um, I'm just, again, another vessel, right? Another person in the body, you know, who, whom God is using to encourage, edify, and remind you of his goodness, right? He loves us with a love that is beyond human logic. We can't define God's love. Don't even try. Um, but you can ask to experience greater depths of it so that you can be a greater light in the midst of darkness. Okay? Um, so Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he gives you the desires of your heart. If he gave you a vision, a dream, if he gave you, you know, I don't know, God talks to people differently. Um, I know religion has corrupted and, you know, uh, misdefined God's personality and, and just his design for us, but he talks to us I know personally, this is, this is, I will have to take account for this. I believe that God speaks to us individually. Like he, he can do that. He can have, have a language for each and every single person on this earth. And so you have to know the language God has for you and how he speaks to you. For me, God speaks to me. I don't necessarily hear an audible voice when he speaks, but I hear him in, in my spirit, right? As most people do. Um, and he talks to me in other ways where I just know it's the Lord affirming, confirming, directing, and letting me know that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm on the right track, right? So you have to know who, who God's voice is, who the Lord's voice is, and how you know somebody. Think about human relationships. How do you know people? By spending time with them. How do you understand people? By listening to them. How do you um, show someone you love them? By desiring to know about them by desiring to please them by desiring to know them by doing things that pleases them so going back to scripture you know the law talks about those who love me will do what i say right a lot of us are not a lot of people not saying you but a lot of people who know the lord and and know what he's done for them they're not listening or doing what he says right and they wonder why things are not happening the way that it should and so delight yourself in the lord and he gives you the desires of your heart right that's it so whatever it is that you're going through guys um just know that you are loved no one no one could ever provide for you protect you preserve you bless you lead you strengthen you heal you give you the confidence the courage the strength in a world that tries to oppress and label people so that they come into agreement with who they say you are and not who God says you are. All these different things, you know what I'm saying, that you have to constantly fight spiritually, right? And it's not a fight that you have to physically fight. It's a spiritual fight, meaning you have the tools, you have the revelation, you have the wisdom, you have the word, right? The word made flesh. You have the word in your midst. Use it. Use that weapon. And you'll see breakthrough right you'll see breakthrough on the level that you're that you're in and it's a lifestyle decision right it's a lifestyle it's not just for a moment or when things are going bad it's a lifestyle right and so um yeah so that's about it like i said i'm gonna keep this under 15 minutes because it's a problem to upload it on my social media so i hope this message was a blessing and i'll come back on probably later with another message all right Love y'all. Cohen L. Gilliams, I King Amongst Kings, CLG Speaks. Talk to you guys later. Enjoying this beautiful sun.